In my previous video, I introduced to you one of my favorite authors, Mikhail Yuryevich Lermontov. And today I'm talking about his book, A Hero of Our Time. Lermontov began working on this novel following the impressions of his first exile to Caucasus. In 1839, two stories appeared in the journal Bela and Fatalist, and in early 1840, Taman was published as well. They all went under the heading note of an officer in the Caucasus. In April 1840, the stories came out in a book, but not as a collection of stories, but a single novel under the title of A Hero of Our Time. In addition to the published stories, work included two new stories, Maxim Maximich and Princess Mary. The order of the stories in a new edition did not correspond to the sequence of their publication in the journals. So, uh, the whole work was united by the main character, the Caucasian officer Pechorin, who stood at the center of the narrative. The preface to the entire novel was written by Lermontov for its second edition in 1841. It was the writer's response to critical reviews of the novel. It was mostly an answer to an article written by Shevirev. The critic called the main hero of a novel person immoral, vicious, having no roots in Russian life. Pechorin, according to Shevirev, belongs to a dreamy world produced in us by a false ideals of a Western world. In addition, Noel angered the prince of Russia himself. Nicholas I allegedly called it a pitiful book showing the great depravity of the author. So, what was the author's answer to this criticism? Lermontov noted the innocence and youthfulness of the Russian reader, accustomed to compositions dominated by direct moralized principles. His novel is a work of a different realistic plan, in which a subtle irony replaces the author's moral teachings, allowing him to show the hero in his entirety, to objectify him, to separate him from the author. Lermontov pointed to the typical character of this hero, whose portrait is composed of the vices of our entire generation in their full development. And therefore, Pechorin is a realistic character corresponding to reality. The main goal of the author is to show our life truthfully. Let's dive deeper into the structure of the novel. Let's start with author's abandonment of chronological sequence when arranging the stories in the final publication. The reason for that is that the parts of this novel are arranged according to the inner necessity. Uh, let me explain. Free circulation of the time gives Lermontov the opportunity to describe Pechorin from different sides, from different perspectives, in a different circumstances of life, gradually bringing him closer to the reader. In the story Bella, Pechorin is perceived through the eyes of Maxim Maximich, a commoner with a deeply Russian mindset through the prism of a national consciousness, the most fundamental contradictions in the character with his nation. But the simple-minded staff captain cannot understand, cannot analyze their origins. Therefore, in the next story, Maxim Maximich, the narrative angle changes. Uh, Pechorin encounters the author, the storyteller himself, a Pechorin-like man with much greater insight. Through his eyes, author shows psychological portrait of the main character. And after that follows one after the other three stories from the Pechorin journal, in which the hero analyzing himself with the uh, utmost degree of penetration and giving the reader an opportunity to look into his soul from the inside. 
The characters of a hero of our time retain a clear connection with the main types of romantic stories in Russia. For example, Bela is a oriental or caucasian tale, Maxim Maximich is a travel story, Taman on the other hand is a outlaw story and Princess Mary is a high society story. And finally, the fatalist is a philosophical story. In each story, Pechorian finds himself within a certain structure of culture and becomes dependent on it. Through the fate of Pechorin, Lermontov exposes from within the inescapable drama of the romantic worldview, which is no longer capable of giving a satisfying answer to the modern person, to the question of the meaning of human existence. According to the text, uh, a person with a romantic way of thinking turns out to be a prisoner of his egoistic passions and desires. In the behavior of Pechorin in every single situation, the same pattern is repeated. Firstly, his joining consciously and prudently into the game offered to him by life. Then the game fades into the background and a happy moment comes when he joins the life of people. And finally, the irony and introspection opens his eyes and everything collapses. But the reason for that is not hidden in his fate, but the quality of Pechorin's mind and at the, the knowledge, and therefore provoking the worst instincts and passions in the souls of people involved in these games. Such a mindset is merciless, not only to those around him, it destructively affects the hero himself, depriving him of his spiritual integrity, splitting his inner self. In the orthodox spiritual tradition, there was no contradiction between the mind and heart, between the feelings and the will. Tradition had a different, holistic understanding of the personality, the formation of which is uh, accomplished not by mechanical leaps, but organically, in the unity of thinking and feeling. Even Russian philosophy is alien to abstract speculation and is closer to the artistic manner of comprehending reality. Obviously, everything is not so simple, and in my next video I will talk a bit about Dostoevsky's works and about his understanding and his notion about the religious consciousness, about the national consciousness, and maybe I will give you some more answers to the questions raised in this video. So uh, be sure to subscribe, and thank you for watching, and see you very soon in the next video.